Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the impact of skew on maximum operating frequency of our designs. This is very important parameter. Practically, it is impossible to take our clock to all the flops in a complex design at the same time. There will always be a delay in the routing for each flip flop. Moreover, the skew is very important in case we want to control the performance of our system. When I say performance, I mean to say by the maximum operating frequency of our design. By controlling our skew, we can control the maximum operating frequency of our design. And even this skew is very important to understand in case we want to control the hold violations inside our design. You will get everything whatever I am saying after listening this video. Now without wasting much time, let us get started. Friends, to know the impact of skew on the maximum operating frequency of the design, we must know how to calculate the maximum operating frequency of the design in the absence of the skew. And I have created a separate video on this subject. I will give its link in the description section as well as in the i bar section, which is on the top right corner of the video. You can go through it. Anyway, let us just recap what we discussed in that video. And we will also see what is the equation to determine the maximum operating frequency of the design. Just as a matter of the fact that our digital designs are made up of millions of flip flop to flip flop paths. And these paths has combination logic in between. Friends, out of these million paths, in the first step, we have to figure out the critical path, which is the slowest path in the complete design. And if we can figure out the maximum operating frequency of that critical path, my entire design should be able to work at that operating frequency. So in the first step, we have to figure out what is the critical or the slowest path in my design. Just for your information, the flip-flop to flip-flop path is called the critical path having maximum amount of combination logic path delay. So let us assume that the path that you are seeing on your screen is a critical path here. Now we will try to understand how to calculate the maximum operating frequency of this path, which ultimately will become the maximum operating frequency of the complete complex design. Hence, as we have not considered skew in this case, so the same clock is going to all the flip-flops inside the design. So flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2 will receive the clock edges at the same time. And let us assume that flip-flop 1 and flip-flop 2 both are working at positive edge of the clock, that is they are positive edge triggered flip-flops. Now let us try to examine the behavior of this critical path when the first clock edge is received. Friends, as soon as the first positive edge of the clock is applied, the flip-flop 1 will start transmitting the input value available at its input that is D1 to its output that is Q1 and it will take TCQ amount of delay to do so. So after TCQ amount of delay, the input value will be available at the output of the flop that is the input of this combination logic. And let us assume that this combination logic has a delay of TCL. So in TCL amount of delay, the combination logic will pass its input value at its output. And its output is nothing but the input of second flip-flop. And we are well aware of the fact that each flip-flop inside the digital design has some setup time requirement. And setup time is nothing but it is a time the input of the flip-flop should be stable for some minimum time before the active edge of the clock. Active edge here is a positive edge of the clock. So let us say the setup time of flip-flop 2 is TSU. So in input to this flip-flop should be stable for this window. Friends, it is quite clear from the figure that if flip-flop 1 throws something on the nth active edge of the clock, it must be captured by flip-flop 2 on n plus 1 active edge of the clock. And from here, we can easily drive the equation for minimum time period of operation. So the minimum time period of operation will be equal to TCQ plus TCL plus T setup of second flip-flop. 
and we also know that frequency is always inversely proportional to the time period of operation. From this equation, we can very easily calculate the maximum operating frequency of the design once we have calculated T minimum, that is the minimum period of operation. So this design is going to work for all the frequencies where time period is greater than T minimum. Now let us assume the case. If we apply the clock having time period less than this T minimum, this calculated value, then in that case, let us assume that the next active edge comes somewhere here. So what will happen? At the first positive edge, this flip-flop one will throw some value. It will reach here only. But the next active edge is somewhere here. So it will violate the setup time requirement of the second flip-flop. And which is undesirable. It, it can make our flip-flop to, to go into a metastable state. And then the behavior of this flip-flop will be uncontrollable. Friends, this was all about maximum operating frequency of the design. How we calculate it. What will be the behavior of our design in case we violate the calculated maximum operating frequency of the design. Now let us see what will be the impact of skew on the maximum operating frequency of our design. Friends, I have considered a positive skew in this case. When I say positive skew, that means the capturing edge flop will get the delayed version of the clock. Even it is quite clear from the waveforms. So this is the clock that is applied to flip-flop 1. And this delayed version is received by flip-flop 2. So this way, it is called positive skew. And in case of negative skew, this delay will be added somewhere here so that the throwing edge flop will get delayed version of the clock as compared to the capturing edge flop. Let us try to examine the behavior of this flip-flop to flip-flop path in case of a positive skew. So as soon as the positive edge of the clock is received, the flip-flop 1 will start transmitting its input value to its output and it will take TCQ amount of time to do so. Then comes the combination logic. So this combination logic will take TCL amount of time to pass its input value to its output. And as we already discussed, flip-flop 2 has some set of time requirement. So it is shown here and it is shown with respect to the clock that flip-flop 2 is receiving. That is a delayed version of the clock. Friends, from these waveforms, it is quite easy to calculate the T minimum. That is a minimum period of operation. So let us try to see what will be the T minimum. This will be TCQ plus TCL and definitely set up time of this flip-flop. But because this edge is getting shifted by this time dollar, so we can subtract here. Because this active edge is getting shifted by this dollar time, so this dollar time will help flip-flop 2 to accommodate its setup time. So this way it is quite clear that T minimum is getting reduced. So that way F maximum will increase. So the maximum operating frequency will increase by adding positive skew in the design. Now let us try to examine the second case that is the case of a negative skew. For negative skew this delay is added somewhere here that means flip-flop 1 that is a throwing flop is getting the delayed version of the clock. And this delay is dollar. And this clock is going to flip-flop to directly. Now let us try to examine the behavior of this flip-flop to flip-flop path in case of negative skew. So on the positive edge, on the delayed clock, the flip-flop 1 will start transmitting its input value to its output. And it will take TCQ amount of time. But with respect to this clock, it is taking dollar, that is Q plus TCQ amount of time. Now this value reaches to the input of this combination logic and this combination logic takes time equal to TCL and this value is available at the input of flip-flop 2. We know that this flip-flop 2 also requires some setup time. Friends, from these waveforms, it is very easy to make an equation for the maximum operating frequency and minimum time period of operation. So if we see, it is this Q plus TCQ plus TCL and setup time of this flip-flop 2. So it will be the T minimum. And F maximum is obviously inversely proportional to T minimum. And it is quite clear that this T minimum is increased with the negative skew. So that means the frequency of operation is reduced by adding the negative skew. Friends, now I am going to conclude this lecture. 
and we saw the first case where there was no skew and the t minimum was equal to tcq of the throwing flop plus the combination logic delay plus setup time of the capturing flop in case of the positive skew this t minimum is reduced to tcq plus tcl plus t setup as it is minus skew the amount of skew added so we saw that t minimum is reduced in a way we can say that maximum operating frequency is increased so that is a plus point of the positive skew that the operating frequency is increased in case of negative skew the t minimum is increased by amount dollar that is skew and the operating frequency is reduced friends with this i am going to wrap up this video and i hope that this would be quite interesting and informative for all of you and in future we will create many such videos to get the notification of all the upcoming videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you so much